Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past, and more. I got this on various sources. Please check the description to know more, there are many interesting topics there, and not all of them can be covered here. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. London, New York, Florence, Geneva, Washington and Dubai. This is not one arch in a Photoshop background, these are real objects from different cities and countries, with different patterns and histories. Let's be honest, small protruding side elements or patterns located at human height, have a much better chance of breaking off than the top center element supported by the structure on three sides. Does no one wonder, how it came to be, that all the arches have a broken, or removed central element? Judging by the similarity of the destruction, the element was destroyed on purpose. There are thousands of photos of giant doors walking around the web, among them not a few photos of St. Isaac's Cathedral. However, there is one photo that does not fit into the official story of high doors just for beauty, or into the version that high doors were used by riders to enter the room without getting off the horse. The height of the doors is 6.8 meters, and the bolted handrails marked in blue are new for ordinary people. How could there be abrasions on the door at the level of non-human height? Even with the version opened the door from a horse, at this height of scuffs, there should have been a rider not on a horse, but on an elephant. One more point, the abrasions are in the middle of a huge door, the handles and modern doors are also in the middle, so convenient anatomically. It turns out that the height of the doors and the scuffed areas are not random, they are absolutely logical and proportional. True, proportional for a creature about 5.5 meters tall. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learn something, and, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Zero point energy is that fundamental energy that gives rise to everything that is. Instead of looking at this fundamental point, modern science is building its skyscraper on sand. Science has little understanding of how atoms come into existence, and how consciousness emerges from among them. The popular Big Bang theory does not explain where the ginormous mass of matter came from, why it exploded, where did the energy for the explosion come from. Then we have the theory of entropy, which says everything moves towards disorder, whereas everywhere one looks, we have intelligent design embedded in nature, and that is not what disorder looks like. Further, everything we see are compassed of atoms, and in that quantum space, everything moves frictionless and continuously. Where does disorder even start to happen in that space? What do you think? Considering the plethora of ancient archaeological sites in North America conspicuously left out of our mainstream education here in America, I will point out that North America was inhabited with a social sophisticated and technologically advanced ancient race of man. The question most often asked and which is the most perplexing to those new to this information is, why would those that formulate our education system and write our history books, consistently leave out, censor and distort the abundant discoveries of this ancient giant race of North America? 
To understand why this is done, we must recognize the simple truth that knowledge is power, and those that do not have it end up paying for it one way or another. The amount of censored ancient archaeological sites in North America is quite simply staggering in volume. There are literally thousands of newspaper articles from early American history that show that an ancient race of giants lived and thrived in America, long before and during the Native Americans' existence on this continent. How all this information could be so thoroughly eliminated from our mainstream American history textbooks and scientific journals shows the scope and depth of the censorship that routinely goes on here in America. This legacy of humanity, kept secret for centuries, is a testament to the sophistication of ancient man, and clearly shows that a conspiracy of silence has been perpetuated on the world for thousands of years by the small few ruling elite that wish to keep mankind rooted in everlasting ignorance. The question you should be asking yourself while you watch this video is why would this ancient giant race of humanity be left out of our education system? Why do they not want us to know about this race? This censorship was carried out by none other than the Smithsonian, an institution that was created to preserve and record the history of the United States of America. Over the course of the many decades of the development and construction of American roads, towns, dams, bridges and other infrastructure, thousands of ancient mounds, temples, burial sites and even whole towns have been discovered, revealing an incredibly vast network of a very sophisticated race of giants that lived in North America. The Smithsonian Institute would come into newly discovered sites and invariable take over any archaeological digs being conducted by private citizens or states and territories, with the promise that the artifacts and skeletal remains would be displayed at a later date in the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C., only to never be seen again. Anyway, this painting by Stephen Quayle shows what was found inside at the cave system in the Grand Canyon that is now off-limits to the American public. What do you think? What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.